Howdy. Hey, hey, hey. How you doing, man? Doing all right. How are you? I'm good. Are you finally back in uh, California? I am, unfortunately. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. All right. It's been fun watching you on Twitter the last two days. It's just been nuts. All right. We'll go ahead and get this uh, sucker recorded. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chuck. I'm trying to just pound it to the ground. This guy has a mistress. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Don't You don't worry about that. All right. I just uh, I don't understand why we have to be so sensitive about these things. Absolutely. Well, the Democrats wouldn't. They'd be uh, they'd be hollering from the rooftops on this. And if Chris McDaniel had a mistress, do you think that uh, uh, Haley Barber and company would let him get away with it? Hell no. So no. In fact, they tried to lie about him having a mistress. Right, and it, and it was all wasn't it all innuendo too? It was all just complete rumor and maybe some abstract blogs, nothing to verify whatsoever. So. Yep. Yeah. All right, Chuck, we'll get going here, and I'm going to get this recorded here and we'll play it back. Joining me on the line is Charles C. Johnson, Chuck Johnson. You can check him out on Twitter, and I've been following him the last couple of days. He is an investigative reporter, and he's been in Mississippi on this very hotly contested race here against uh, Thad Cochran and Chris McDaniel. It's great to have you back here in South Georgia. Thank you for having me. Well, I'll tell you what, it's been a wild couple of days here, and one of the things that you've been doing on Twitter successfully here is is making the point, and and this cannot be made enough, that uh, for one thing, uh, Thad Cochran has a lot of explaining to do, uh, especially when it comes to a woman named Kay Weber. What light can you shine on his relationship with her and also the situation where, with what's going on with his wife in the nursing home? So, Kay Weber is Thad Cochran's executive assistant, has been his executive assistant uh, for many years, I think as recently as 2000. Uh, she uh, has, has started up basically as a receptionist with Thad Cochran and worked her way all the way up to be his executive assistant. She's one of the higher paid ones, and from what we can tell and what many people are reporting, she is in fact Thad Cochran's mistress. She lives in a home with him in D.C. Uh, it's a mansion that she could never have afforded on her own salary and that she bought with the help of a Democrat lobbyist uh, with Trustmark, a, uh, a company, uh, a banking, uh, a Mississippi bank, essentially, that Thad Cochran has bailed out with all of our taxpayer dollars. So you have, you have him living in sin in a, in a mansion, with his mistress, uh, essentially on the taxpayer dime. You know what's really interesting here is that if you compare Democrats, and this is the wild thing, if you look at Democrats, look at look at Ted Kennedy and, and look at Bill Clinton, who have had mistresses before or have had uh, these uh, one-night stands or whatever. It's all kind of undercover. You know, they're not, they're not parading them on TV, but that Cochran... A Republican is out in the open with her, which is just an in-your-face, uh, pretty much for, with any for anybody that's pretty much uh, paying attention to this. Yeah, I mean, it's um, I have I have at least ten photos uh, and more, um, and uh, I I have seen her. I mean, she's she's gone on at least seventy taxpayer paid for trips all around the country. Or, excuse me, all around the world, rather, on our dime. Uh, and it's not clear what, what she brings to bear on any of those things. Uh, she's identified in a number of press reports as his wife, uh, his real wife. It, it, he's stuck in a nursing home back in 2000. Uh, there's some rumors in Mississippi that she, she actually had a nervous breakdown when she learned about all of the affairs that her husband was having. And this is the kind of thing that is brazen for any politician. Uh, certainly, you'd expect better of a Republican from the Bible Belt, what is supposedly America's most conservative state in the Union. You know, I'm looking at a picture right now of her with Thad Cochran on your Twitter timeline. They're sitting at a table together. It's a fancy affair. They're both wearing uh, formal wear, and uh, she's kind of looking over his shoulder at a card that he's reading, 
And, you know, I'm sorry, it, it doesn't look like a staffer to me. This is a, a picture, you know, I don't I don't hate to use the same um, comparison here, but it almost looks like uh, my parents or my grandparents together um, in, enjoying some time together. And anybody with half a brain um, has to see um, this for what it is. Well, you know, um, the situation is, is pretty pretty grotesque. I mean, it's one thing to be to have a mistress. Uh, you know, Ted Kennedy, who was a big supporter and friend of Dad Cochran, had many mistresses over the years. Uh, similarly, for Chris Dodd, who also had many mistresses and was a friend of Dad Cochran's over the years. Um, but it's one thing to have all that, and it's another thing to kind of stick your wife in a nursing home. Uh, three miles from where she's from, and to not visit her, and to not make a big deal about it. Now, I happen to think that what the what the establishment did, and remember, the first people we learned about the Clayton Kelly photo from, the one taken in the nursing home, uh, they tried to make it sound like he broke and entered, that he ran in there and took a photo. In fact, he very calmly walked. <coughs> excuse me, walked in during visiting hours, took the photo and left. Uh, and they tried to make it all about that photo. Well, two days later, Dad Cochran went to a, went to a fundraiser just 6.9 miles away and didn't visit his wife, who had dementia. In fact, from what we can tell, he goes and visits his demented wife with his mistress in tow, uh, which is pretty sick. And it gets even worse than that because... You know, he has tried to make this about us attacking his family, us going after his family. Uh, and they, the, uh, the kind of lazy people at the NRSC, what they've done is they have, have pointed out when McDaniel went and criticized Dad Cochran's daughter, Kate, Kate Cochran, who is in fact something of a liberal college professor, uh, for attacking uh, Chris McDaniel for saying that he, uh, so, so, so Kay Cochran attacked Chris McDaniel and said that he only uses Jesus, the Constitution, and common sense. And the McDaniel campaign made fun of her and said, you're right, we do. Um, and so they, the, the NRSC is now saying that we're attacking Cochran's adult daughter. Uh, what I decided to do is just go through and go through the bios of all of both of Cochran's children uh, that are publicly available. And what I did was I just took those bios and posted them online, and they show that they grew up in Arlington, Virginia, not, in fact, in Mississippi. So there's a lot of just lying, and he's essentially r ruled this area from afar with the, with the American taxpayer footing the bill. You know, it's interesting. One of the things that you ha have made a point of is that everybody in the GOP establishment knows that about this affair, and it's common knowledge. It is not a secret at all, even though they would like you to believe otherwise. Yeah, I mean, it's basically just out in the open. And you know, you've got to ask yourself, like, a man who has a mistress, I'm going to be posting uh, more and more photos of Cochran with his mistress throughout the day. Um, but a man who has his mistress uh, is likely to get um, likely to get blackmailed. Lets it come out. Uh, the Cochrane camp trying to protect themselves by trying to smear McDaniel and say that he had a mistress with a fellow state legislator, which of course is ridiculous. Um, both of them are married, uh, and everyone who's looked into the situation, myself included has concluded that she's just sort of one of those girls who likes to hang out with other guys, and so she goes and drinks and hangs out with the other state legislators, McDaniel included, and they're political allies. There's nothing to uh, anything of that sort. And they're, they're really trying to pin that on him because uh, to distract their own problems within, within their own campaign, uh, for sure. They're trying to find any distraction they can possibly uh, grab onto. That's right. You know, it's interesting how the NRSC, the National Republican Senate Committee, uh, also top people in the campaign, especially from Stu Stevens. Um, I, I've been on Twitter for a couple of years, and I follow the Kentucky 
uh, primary quite a bit. And one of the things I've noticed, whether you like him or you hate him, uh, you would have to admit uh, Jesse Benton, um, when it comes to social media, he's very disciplined. He doesn't get involved in petty little arguments about whatever, and he pretty much stays away from arguing with voters and random people and media people. He allows other people to do that for him um, in his own media circles, and I'm not I'm not praising him for that because I'm not a big fan of his, but at the same time, he kind of doesn't mess with other people in that regard. It seems like somebody like Stu Stevens is uh, it's pretty wild. I remember when I first got on Twitter and I, uh, when dealing with uh, the hashtag MSSEN, Mississippi Senate, uh, using that hashtag and, and trying to find out what's going on, I think I, I posted something um, about Thad Cochran from, from FreedomWorks, and it had to do with him uh, raising the debt ceiling or something like that. Then immediately, Stu Stevens, the top guy, in Mitt Romney's campaign, uh, blast me f- for doing it. And you're thinking to yourself, man, that's kind of odd. Is It seems very desperate uh, for the top people in their campaign to be involved um, in these in these uh, Twitter battles. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, he's used to, be, to uh, a different kind of world of campaigning. And he thinks uh, that essentially he can just reply to things on Twitter and that everything will be fine. Um, I have no problems ridiculing people who are leaders in our, you know, leaders supposedly in our party. Um, I think one of the major reasons Obama may have won is that Stu Stevens was messing about on Twitter more than he was actually, <laughs> more than he was actually doing anything, uh, anything serious. Um, that's kind of my read on the situation. Uh, that, that basically the consultants just hang around D.C. or they run around and. Uh, and Stu Stevens, you got to understand, he's very moderate in his views. He likes to think of himself as a screenwriter and all these other things. Um, and he is, he's essentially worried right here that his meal ticket, uh, Thad Cochran, who's directed lots of federal money to D.C. Co- DC people as well as a little bit to Mississippi here and there, um, he's worried that his meal ticket is going to disappear. And he should be worried because uh, the establishment is increasingly getting damaged across the country, particularly in the more conservative states. And this will just continue to happen, so there will be fewer and fewer senators that are that are under control of the establishment. I think it's certainly going to happen in Alaska with Meade Treadwell against Dan Sullivan. Uh, Treadwell is definitely going to defeat uh, Sullivan, even though Sullivan has, has uh, $2 million of Karl Rove money pouring in. Um, you know, Treadwell has supporters. So it's one of these things where there's this view that the establishment is also powerful because it's able to convince rich people to give it money. But if I had a choice between having lots of money and having lots of voters, I'd take having lots of voters every time. You know, and I think what the establishment doesn't understand is how significant the uh, Kentucky race was because even though Matt Bevin lost, it was the first shot um uh, uh, you know, I guess the first person through the wall, so to speak, with him. And I, I think, you know, a lot of people, including a Senative Conservatives Fund and, and other conservative groups out there, realizing that, uh, wow, the establishment might win here. We've got to do something. And I think that right there was kind of what got people uh, very angry. And uh, and it started a spark. And all of a sudden, it started snowballing. We, we saw what happened uh, in Virginia. And we're seeing what we're ha- what's happening in Mississippi. And so it looks like um, uh, the establishment wasn't expecting this at all. Um, they thought they had this in the bag right after uh, Mitch McConnell won his primary. Yeah, I mean, you've got to understand that, that that race, while complicated, was extremely important because it essentially wasted a lot of establishment money protecting uh, protect, protecting uh, uh, Mitch McConnell, the majority leader. Um that money, and, and by the way, I mean, Matt Pevin was an extremely flawed candidate. Uh, and nonetheless, he, um, you know, he was uh, very quickly defeated, uh, very quickly defeated, but he did force them to spend lots and lots of money. He did force them to be accountable in a way that previously Mitch McConnell had never been accountable. 
Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about hijinks in, in this race, uh, Charles. Um, I want to talk about what we're, we're hearing how Thed Cochran is uh, courting uh, black Democrats. We hear stories about um, them paying, um, you know, black pastors getting paid uh, money to go out and, and get people to vote for Thad Cochran. What's happening right now um, as far as that's concerned? Well, essentially, he is running around trying to force um, uh, he's running around essentially forcing uh, and encouraging uh, black Democrats to turn out for him. He and the Haley Barber machine. And we should remember, by the way, Haley Barber is one of the largest lobbyists in the United States. He's a mega lobbyist. He, um, and he, uh, he very much needs to be sort of called into question what he's doing in Mississippi, uh, particularly if he's he essentially controls the media there and is trying to control the media in D.C. as well. Um, it's very interesting. I mean, I would just say that, you know, they're, they're using illegal robocalls to try and turn out the black vote. It's illegal in Mississippi to vote in the primary if you intend to vote in the general for a different candidate, uh, uh, you know, or, from, or for a different party. Um, that seems to be what... And nonetheless, they're running around trying to encourage it. The other day, I posted a robocall on Twitter uh, that I got, uh, which is uh, which is, has a black woman uh, saying that the racist Republicans are running around are going to run around and take away uh, your vote. Um, and so it's very um, it's very discouraging. You know, you also brought up. Uh Tell me a little bit about this this one guy that um, destroyed all these signs and, and is having charges uh, brought up, brought brought up against him, um, some felony charges here, and also compare that as we go. Let, let's take a, a step back here and, and talk also about Clayton Kelly and how the Fed Cochran, Cochran campaign tried to make hay out of that situation that Chris McDaniel had absolutely nothing to do with. But at the same time, uh, people that are actually in their campaign already have charges brought against them for illegal activity that they've been doing. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Well, it's very interesting. I mean, the entire fight uh, here is, so on the one hand, we have, Clayton Kelly, uh, a guy who got into trouble for essentially going and taking a photo of a, of a woman in, in an old folks' home, uh, and he's being persecuted and has very poor representation. Uh, he's being persecuted by the Mississippi machine. Uh, at, at the same time, we have Lee Blair, the county chair, uh, you get a the vote guy for Cochran, running around destroying signs. Um, David Philly, who is the guy who actually caught Lee Blair and took all the photos that I posted online, uh, he essentially said, you know, I, I expect to be retaliated against in DeSoto County because this is the who's who of Mississippi politics, you know, and they all support that Cochran. But nonetheless, I think it's the right thing to do to get involved. And so he posted, he gave me all the photos, I posted them up, and Lee Blair uh, is is you know, has been charged with a felony, as opposed to Clayton Kelly, who is uh, charged with uh, essentially harming an old person. Um, but even there, the statute isn't clear about what exactly he's done wrong, because you can take photos of old people. Um, so it's, it, may, it may be that he just ends up settling uh, because he has no real money. Um, but he probably shouldn't settle, and he probably shouldn't have even been charged. Tell me a little bit about the Hines County Executive uh, Committee chair and what's going on in Hines County. I think we've heard uh, some reports about they're worried about um, what's going on as far as uh, people uh, voting in in that uh, in that precinct. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, essentially what we've got there is we've got Pete uh, Pete Perry, who is the county county chairman there, um, and it's. Uh, it's quite something. I mean, basically what we have there is we have them getting out the vote uh, to try and force uh, him to, uh, uh, to, to basically to force as many you know, black voters to the polls as possible. Uh, there are reports of 
black voters being bribed, um, and even uh, a radio host in Mississippi has claimed that uh, if anyone can, can provide credible evidence, he will match another $1,000 reward. And so there's $2,000 on the table for any person to come forward with evidence that they were bribed. Um, the idea being that a bigger bribe would induce them uh, to come forward. Um, there's all kinds of things going on, though, like, for instance, at, at a mega black church here that's very uh, pro-Obama. Um, by the way, the robocall said that uh, that uh, that Chris McDaniel would come in and be against Obama, and so they needed to show up to defend Obama against a guy who had disrespected the first black president. Uh, so, you know, there's there's sort of this racial element here um, that's particularly unsavory, but at this black mega church, uh, they, they were apparently coordinating how they were going to get us to vote for Cochran, and they demanded that everyone turn in their cell phone. Mm. Uh, l- lest uh, people surreptitiously record it. Wow, it, it sounds like it's going to get interesting tonight here as we're looking ahead um, to this uh, battle here for the runoff. Any predictions as far as what's going to happen? Um, well, I think it will be very interesting. My my general sense is that, is that McDaniel may very well win, um, but it will be very, very close, and it will not be as, as large as I would have predicted had there been a fair entry election. Absolutely. Well, we'll continue to monitor what's going on. How can people learn more about you and your website and how people can follow you? They can come visit me at Chuck C. Johnson uh, at, on Twitter. That's probably the best way. And CharlesCJohnson.com. I have um, all kinds of projects I'm working on. I'm going to be doing some stuff in Louisiana, Alaska, and a few other places. And uh, I am you know, an independent journalist. Um, We'll be launching my own site sometime this summer, and uh, it's called Got News, and I'm looking forward to uh, to chatting more about it with people in the future. Very good. We appreciate it, Chuck, and thank you so much for stopping by in South Georgia today. Thank you so much.